look at the external anatomy of a squid. So first thing we want to do is actually orient ourselves looking at the body plans of these guys here. Now remember cephalopoda means head foot. Um, so when we look at these guys they have a very unique body plan. We're gonna take a look at the anterior posterior dorsal ventral for these guys first. So in orienting ourselves not what we would expect. So when we look at it the head foot region down here we see at the bottom. We have the visceral mass region up here. This head foot region would be actually considered the ventral part of the animal. The top part up here would be the dorsal part of the animal. And then this whole front side, this whole front side would actually be the anterior. And if we turn them over, this side here, and the way we know the side that for the posterior is when we find the siphon. So here's the siphon right here, okay? So this is the posterior side. So once again, we have our anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral. We could tell anterior um, versus posterior by the coloration. Uh, the anterior has a darker coloring and the posterior has a lighter coloring that we see right here. Okay. All right, some of the key features that we want to know for these guys here are gonna be the fins, which are used in swimming and maneuvering. Um, remember, they, these guys use jet propulsion to get around, so they need some way of controlling themselves as they do that. So we have the fins here. This whole piece up here, this is actually the mantle. So we know this is the visceral mass up here. This is where most of the internal organs are um, and the body functions we're gonna find up here. The visceral mass here, we know that there's a mantle. This whole thing you see on the outside is actually the mantle. I could actually stick my finger underneath here and I'm actually putting my finger in the mantle cavity right now. So the mantle is this whole outer piece all the way around is our mantle here. We have our chromatophore cells. So all the little dots that you see on the squid up here, those are chromatophores. Those are what allow for color change in this little guy here. Um, so that way he can deal with camouflage uh, and stuff like that. When we go down to the head foot region down here, so away from the visceral mass, we have the eyes on this side. Remember they have really good, um, really well developed eyes. We have the arms and tentacles. Now the arms, are shorter. So you, you're gonna wanna remember that. So the arms are the shorter appendages down here. The longer ones, you see here, the two, those are the tentacles. So the tentacles are the longer ones. The arms are the shorter ones. The tentacles are used for grabbing prey and then pulling them inward. And then the arms help with maintaining the prey in that area. If I were to open up between all of these, we would find the beak. So that little black dot that you see in there, um, and if you actually had a, ch had a chance to um, dissect, you would actually be able to feel that there, that's their beak. So the beak is right there in between all the arms and tentacles. If I flip this guy over, one of the most important body parts here that's involved in locomotion is the, if I get to open up, siphon. So there's the siphon or funnel right there and that's where the water gets pushed out. So water gets taken into the mantle cavity and then pushed out through here to allow for jet propulsion to occur, okay? So those are the main parts for our squid here. So again, one more time here, just to cover and make sure we know everything. We have the head foot region, the visceral mass, the fins, the mantle cavity, which is this whole outer piece right here, the chromatophore cells, which are involved in camouflage, the eyes, the tentacles versus the arms. Remember the tentacles are the long ones. The arms are the shorter ones. We have the beak in the center here. And then when we turn this little guy over, we have the siphon used for jet propulsion.